a call. Well, welcome everybody to the first Friday um, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship call with K-State Research and Extension. The purpose of our first Friday call is uh, to increase the local community's knowledge about the experts, the education, and the economic resources that are available to help small businesses, entrepreneurs, and the communities who love them. Um, and as always, the call is being recorded and it will be on our website after the, afterwards. Um, so please um, reach out to somebody who might benefit from this information and let them know about the call. If you're on this call, then you're now on my mailing list. And if, if that doesn't suit you at any time, it's just a simple mat matter of unsubscribing, but then you'll get a notice to the future calls. Um, and um, if you have some uh, social media that you would like to share our calls to, we have changed our process so that it is now a, a social media event that's posted on the K-State Research and Extension website uh, or Facebook page, and we can call you a co-host and it'll automatically post to your uh, site. But otherwise, uh, let me know that you want to do that and I'll, and you can share it out with others. Uh, I'll put you on the list, Nathan. Yeah, send me a message, Nathan. Okay, very good, I love it. All right, so uh, without further ado, um, let me introduce Steve Radley, who's the CEO of Network Kansas. And he's gonna tell us about Grow Kansas, which is financial capital for your small business. And he'll introduce his, his presenters. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, Nancy. Well, I'm not going to tell you about it, but we have some smarter people that are. Um, I do want to just give a little bit of background that um, <clears throat> this program called Grow Kansas uh, is a is is an, a really exciting program uh, that that's going to give Kansas entrepreneurs a lot more potential ways to access capital across the uh, across the state. And um, uh, we have, uh, we were one of, Kansas was one of the first five states approved out of 50 states. And we were also one of the first states to launch. We launched in August and, uh, and we're just really excited about not only the program for entrepreneurs, but the incredible involvement of our partners across the state. And so I'm going to introduce both, um, both the speakers, and then uh, Imogene, Imogene will turn it over to Trish afterwards, but uh, Imogene Harris is our Vice President of Impact Investment Services, and she is the, she runs the loan program. Um, by the way, Tiffany Nixon is also on um, today, and she is uh, the Director of our Impact Investment Center, so she's also involved. Um, <clears throat> and so she's gonna talk about the loan programs, and then Trish Braestead is president of a, uh, uh, a relatively new business unit that's part of Network Kansas called Entrepreneurial Growth Ventures. And she is going to talk about the equity investment programs as well. So with that, I will, uh, I do want to mention, we also have um, the kind of our head honcho uh, entrepreneurship community coach, uh, on the line today, Sarah LaRoche from uh, Osborne, Kansas. So I'm excited to see that Sarah joined the call as well. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Imogene. Yeah, thanks, Steve. And uh, thanks, Nancy, for the invite to let us join uh, First Friday today. So yeah, well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit of Grow Kansas uh, this morning. Um, so just a little bit of background about this program. Um, it's actually comes from a federal program. Uh, through the U.S. Treasury called the State Small Business Credit Initiative, um, or SSBCI, as you can see on there. Um, this is actually the second time SSBCI has come around. It first came out in 2010 as a response to the recession, and now, of course, uh, they they started it back up again um, as a part of the American Rescue Plan. So um, this here is mostly just to, we really want to showcase kind of the opportunity that exists with this particular program. It's To us, it's really special. Um, and so the first time around, um, Kansas was allocated $13.8 million through SSBCI. 
Uh, we ran it then as what we called the capital multiplier program, both for loan and in venture. Um, but we started with 13.8, we put 8.9 towards our loan program at the time and then 3.9 towards equity. And, and the main story here on this slide is just that we started with 8.9, 3.9 there in 2010. But as of spring of last year, we had loaned out, you know, not quite twice as much um, and then invested more than we had started with, right? Without ever adding additional dollars to this program. So there really is just like, this is something you can truly build a revolving fund, an evergreen fund, however you want to call it. You know, this is something that's sustainable uh, and lasting. Um, and then again, there, you can also see that this in total leveraged over $340 million in private capital, whether that's bank loans or other private investors on the equity side. Um, so to us, this is just really special in terms of not only just access to the resources now, but what we can build over time uh, for small businesses in Kansas. And so if that's what we were able to accomplish with 13.8, we're excited to see what we can do with the $69 million that Kansas was allocated this time around. Um, we're gonna be splitting it similarly, a little bit more towards equity this time, uh, but we've got 42 million that we're putting into the loan programs and then 27 million into equity. So again, we think this could be really significant for Kansas in terms of building building those, those funding uh, resources. So just kind of, so you're all aware, again, a little bit more context. Um, when it comes to SSPCI or Grow Kansas, from the federal perspective, what their goal is, is a 10 to one match. So for every one Grow Kansas or SSPCI dollar, they wanna see 10, uh, private dollars leveraged, kind of like by the end of the program. That's that's their goal, is that they're stimulating private investment. Their other uh, focus or goal this time around is reaching what we're calling SETI or socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. So this is a really broad topic and include or or sort of like category. Their focus, you know, that can include rural, women, minority, uh, veteran. LGBTQ, like, so it's really broad as far as what they're considering socially and economically disadvantaged. It's not a requirement to access the program, but every state, when they submitted their application, had to say, this is how we are going to be able to reach these individuals. Um, and there's just some benefits to potentially getting more dollars if you can, if you reach enough of them. For us, uh, for Grow Kansas, for Kansas, we had some goals too. Again, this is the second time around that we've been able to interact with this federal program. And so for us, it was, hey, how can we do it better this time? Uh, you know, how can we want increased diversity of our portfolio? And we mean that in a broad way too. You know, how are we reaching more rural, more urban distress, more women, more minorities, but also a, a variety of business stages? We want startups, we want growth, um, all different sizes of projects from little so big. So um, that's one of our goals. Goals, And the second is just to be engaging more partners. Um, that is just sort of the Network Kansas model. We are always using our partners to be reaching these small businesses. That's what we did the first time around. Um, speaking through the loan program, specifically the first time we really utilized our certified development company. So these are like regional loan packagers um, for that program. And we are back working with them again. Uh, we never really stopped because they use our other programs too. But then we said, how can we find more folks? How can we be engaging our entrepreneurship communities? How can we be reaching even more businesses and more partners uh, to get um, utilization of this program? So if we dive into the program itself a little bit more, um, again, here's, here's a map of our partners. So if you just see an individual star, that's kind of our, those are our statewide partners. So um, I know we've had some folks here on in the Southwest. We've got Great Plains in the Southwest. We've got Southeast Kansas Prosperity Foundation as an example in the Southeast. So you can just kind of see we've got a few of those around the state. Um, and then if you've got a circle with a star in it, those are what we're calling our authorized e-communities. So these are um, basically local groups. Uh, if you're not familiar with our e-community model at Network Kansas, these are community teams. They've got a leadership team that is um, focused on entrepreneurship. And then they also have a financial review board that already has experience making decisions on loans. And so 
we wanted to empower them to make decisions on a couple of uh, the Grow Kansas loan programs that we have too, um, just to give them access to more resources that they can get out the door quicker for their businesses. So again, our statewide partners, you can see them up there. Um, these groups are gonna be able to submit Grow Kansas applications on behalf of the entrepreneur. So like Tiffany and I, we don't, we don't interact with the businesses a lot directly. We're working with our partners since they're the ones submitting the application. Um, a couple of these groups are serving the entire state if we need them to. So if you didn't see one of these stars in your region, that's okay. Um, if you still need to utilize them, we can help connect you to somebody um, that could help push an application through. And then these are going to occur on a monthly round. So we've got a round closing here in just under two weeks on the 15th. That's when we accept applications for February. And then we'll review them for about a week and send them to our review committee um, for about a week. And then we'll repeat that again in March, April, et cetera. And then for our authorized e communities, again, they can decide on two of our uh, Grow Kansas loans uh, locally. So again, they've already got a local review board. We're just saying, hey, why don't you go ahead and use that in addition to your e-community loans? You could run rural and urban distress Grow Kansas loans or the minority and women starter Grow Kansas loans through your local review team. Um, so those are just sort of on a rolling basis. And then, there we go. So if we just kind of go through these five loan programs uh, that we have under the loan fund, uh, we'll just we'll just go through and show you the match um, and kind of how they each work. They work very similar. It's just varying matches of what's allowed and then different caps. Um, this yellow box here represents the two programs that our authorized e-communities can just make decisions on locally through their financial review teams. So if we start with um, our rural and urban distress loans, these are gonna be for, as you might imagine, <laughs> rural areas. So where a population of the town is 50,000 or less uh, or distressed areas of um, urban centers or metro centers. So we would just define that by 20% or more of the population is living uh, below the poverty level. So if you're familiar with like CDFIs or new market tax credit um, maps, it would be those distressed census tracts that would fit there as well. And this is it, this is either or, so it doesn't have to be distressed rural, it's just rural or distressed urban is what would fit for this program. Uh, this is gonna match up to 150% of the private investment. So think a bank loan is what we need. Um, so for example, here, uh, we had an eye care business, uh, in Atchison that had over $450,000 that they were able to get through a bank in order to sort of make this purchase um, of the assets. And they requested up to the full $100,000 through uh, Grow Kansas. So they had well over enough match uh, in order to access this program and were able to get some gap funding to just fill that need so they can make that purchase happen. So similarly with our minority and women-led starter loans, uh, this is also up to 100,000, but it's completely statewide. Um, so it's just, it the business needs to be 51% um, or more led or owned by a woman and or minority in order to access this program. And it's up to a 200% match. So just a little bit higher match on this one. Uh, so here, uh, as an example, we've had a construction business come through from Kansas City, Kansas. Um, they had a $50,000 uh, bank loan that they used as match, and they went ahead and capitalized on that full match and loan uh, and asked for an additional $100,000 um, through this program. So next, we start moving into where you're going to see the match go down. Um, quite a bit, um, but the loan cap goes up. So that's sort of how we balance, um, I guess, risk <laughs> it, as one way in our portfolio. Um, so this is our minority and women-led growth loans. So again, 51% or more women and or minority owned. Um, it's gonna be a 25% match on that bank loan and private investment, completely statewide again, 
but it's going to go up to $250,000. So uh, we had a, um, or we're working with a restaurant in Wichita, um, and they had about $1.15 million in their, their bank, and they have applied for an additional $125,000 through this program. And then we have our community asset loan. Um, so you might imagine this is uh, for projects that would be considered an asset to your community. Um, it's also gonna be the broadest of our programs. Um, at Network Kansas, we believe in small business and entrepreneurship as um, economic development mechanisms. So we're gonna be pretty hard pressed to find a business that we wouldn't consider a community asset really. Um, so this is going to be a 15% match of those bank loans up to 250,000 completely statewide. Um, so as an example here, we've got a Hutchinson business that had about 1.3 million that they got from um, a bank to build a new kind of restaurant type business. And then they asked for an additional $200,000 through this community asset loan to help close that. Um, I think it was primarily like a working capital gap, which is really, really common for our programs. And then finally, we have our target sector loans. And you can see those target sectors up at the top, what you would probably guess for Kansas. We've got advanced manufacturing, aerospace, distribution, logistics and transportation, food and ag, and those professional and technical services. Uh, this is gonna be a 10% match. So you can see the match going down a little bit each time, uh, but clear up to a million dollars um, on the loan cap. So if maybe this business gets a $5 million bank loan, they could come to this program and ask for, you know, up to $500,000 in that scenario. So before I move on, I'm going to just pause there for a second if there's kind of any initial questions on the matching or anything. I mean, Jean, I might just make one comment that um, I have made a note. We, uh, if you know a business that is getting a bank loan and expanding or starting, this is something they need to know about. And because, and I'm going to tell you one of the big reasons, if you watched CNBC yesterday, the Fed raised rates again, a quarter point. So interest rates are going up and up and up. Our interest rates on this program are 4% for five year and 6% or a 10-year note on all of those programs that Imogene mentioned. And so this can be an opportunity to blend their rates down. And in many cases now, uh, you're not going to be able to get that type of interest rate. And so <clears throat> we're talking to Kansas uh, Department of Commerce business development staff this week, and, and uh, we're, we were talking about that. So it's it's really a program that at least businesses, if you have, if you know a business that that is uh, um, expanding or doing this, you need to have them call us, and we'll get them connected to a resource uh, to evaluate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Steve. And and I heard you is. say I'm going to reiterate <laughs> what I heard you say, um, Imogene, that it would be you'd be a little bit hard pressed to find a business that you didn't consider a community asset. Um, and and I love the fact that you had a restaurant as the example, because in many of these small towns, they really want that cafe to succeed. And uh, it's a gathering place. Um, and so I'm just reiterating that that would qualify, correct? Correct. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, so... Um... Exactly. That's, that's a great lead in. You know, what are we kind of looking for here for this for this program? What are our just basic baseline what you need to hit um, before you can even come? And um, this is for, of course, in Kansas. Uh, it's for profits or nonprofits, which is new. Um, last time they didn't allow nonprofits through this program. Um, this time we do. So that's exciting just to have another option. Uh, it is small business, which would be fewer than 500 employees. That's usually not a problem for what Network Kansas sees. I was telling somebody the other day, I think when I see 25 on an application, I think that's huge. So um, I don't get too worried about the fewer than 500, uh, but it is just an FYI. 
um, any business stages. So for any of these five programs, any business stage can access any of them, whether they're a brand new startup um, or they're a growing business. It's, to, it's open to anyone. Um, there does have to be a bank or like CDFI or some kind of formal private institution involved as a part of that match. So that's one of the kind of the key things. It's like, you gotta be working with a bank uh, in order to kind of access these other gap funding through Go Kansas. Uh, again, there is a focus on steady or these socially and economically disadvantaged populations. It's not a requirement, right? We can find somewhere to fit um, based on other things. So just a focus, not a fit. Um, use of funds is, is relatively flexible. It, it really is. And again, most of what we use see these used for is working capital anyway. Um, but, you know, if somebody needs a little bit of extra funds to get an equipment or, or, or get their building done or, or inventory, whatever, um, it's it's pretty flexible. We've got a 90 day look back on the match. So um, that's decent. But I do recommend if somebody thinks they're going to need some additional capital into their bank loan, they're probably going to want to start thinking about this program sooner rather than later so they don't get a bank loan and then at that 90 day mark go, oh man, I really could use some more, right? Like it, ideally maybe it's kind of actually happening at the same time would be ideal, but it doesn't always work like that. Uh, collateral is not required for Grow Kansas, but you know, it's nice. We don't mind having a secured position, but technically it's not required. Um, and then a personal guarantee is required for anyone that owns 20% or more of the business. And then as Steve mentioned our terms, if the, the Grow Kansas loan is from one to five years, it's going to be at 4%. If it's six to 10 years, it's at 6%. I'm Jean, I think you might have answered this question, but um, we have a question for the, for the, oh, I see Steve's answering it. For the loan applications, does equity count toward matching funds? And if your county is not a partner yet with Network Kansas, does that leave you out? I didn't answer the first one about equity. I'll let Aunt, I'm a gene answers that one a lot better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for the loans, um, a bank has to be involved. Like that's number one. However, we can include other private dollars. So if that's like owner injection in the form of a down payment. Um, if friends and family are putting dollars in, if there's just sort of another private investor, that's okay too. Um, but you know, it still needs to be within that 90 days and it needs to be documented somehow. Like you can't just be like, yeah, they gave us some money. We're going to need to be able to see that in some form, whether it's like a copy of a check or a deposit or something. Um, so that's just the main thing with those. Um, the reality is, is on the backside, it's just it's just easier. The, the, the bank loan is the main piece for sure. <laughs> it just it's just cleaner and nice. But we can we can look at that other um, stuff as well, certainly. Um, so like I said, it is flexible, uh, but there are a few red flags and things that we do need to look out for. Uh, we cannot use Grow Kansas for purchasing stock. So that includes even like ownership, right? So if this is a business purchase, we need to be focusing on the purchase of the assets. Uh, it can't be like Goodwill or Blue Sky or, or anything like that. Um, nothing for speculative um, or illegal activities, please. Um, anything with conflicts of interest that's usually related to like how the borrower might know the banker or something like that. If they're like family members that would be an issue. Um, we can do things related to paths of real estate. So think about somebody buying a building, but maybe not using that building for their business, like if they're renting it out. We can do stuff with that, but there's some extra check boxes. So we really like to talk with folks first. So if that's the project, please, please call us. Let's talk through it first. And same thing with refinancing. Um, this is probably the downside to what Steve was talking about in terms of rates is we've had more questions about refinancing because as rates have gone up, folks are looking for that, um, you know, cheaper capital really. And again, we can do it, but there's some extra boxes. So we are going to want to talk first before somebody starts just running through this application. Um, that one's honestly probably the trickiest one. And then finally, there's a $20 million project cap. We don't run into this a lot. That's just not usually an issue, but I do like to bring it up. Um, just the total project cannot be over $20 million. We can't be a part of it. It's just probably considered kind of too big. 
And then here's what we've done so far. We launched in August. Um, we have 23 businesses that we've approved. Um, and actually just yesterday, I think that's gone up a couple. We've had, it's, it's kind of gone gangbusters just this week. So I think we're probably closer to 25 or so that have been approved. 22 um, of those are SETI. So most everything's falling under SETI in our portfolio, which is great. Um, we have 17 businesses that have actually received those dollars and have, you know, they've it's been dispersed to them. So that's about 2.17 million that we've approved, over a million dollars out the door. Um, and then, you know, of the dollars out the door, we've leveraged about another 2 million. And um, once the other ones get out the door, it should be closer to six to seven million that's been leveraged, assuming that those projects don't change significantly. Um, we're running so far from Hayes to KCK. So I don't have a map for you yet. And that's mostly because the map I do have is outdated. Um, it only had us as far west as Salina. We're now out to Hayes. So we're feeling good that we're getting that geographic reach across the state. Um, our e-communities are doing great at bringing it in. You can see we've got eight of them that came through our authorized e-communities, 15 statewide, but I've got a little asterisk there because honestly, if uh, at least four, maybe five of those were still sourced from e-communities. So um, the e-communities are definitely proving out to be just great partners, knowing businesses that can utilize um, this program. And then also you can see the breakout there of how folks, what programs folks have been accessing. Um, and of course, those, the, the minority and women starter and the, and the rural and urban um, distress have just kind of been our leaders um, in providing that gap financing. I might add one thing about that um, for that other question. If you're an e-community that's not an authorized e-community or if you're in a county that's not even a partner yet, that doesn't matter. You call us and the statewide partners like Great Plains Development and Southeast Prosperity and Northwest, all were part, of, they're the most experienced group. They were involved in uh, 1.0. And so we would connect you to one of those or your business to one of those to work on the packaging. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. And um, yeah, if, if, if either you as sort of like one of our partners has some ideas or more questions, certainly just reach out to us, uh, our center at those numbers or send a business that you think might benefit there as well. And we can kind of run through the typical queries of if this is a fit or not. And if it is, we can also help connect them to that appropriate partner. So um, don't, yeah, definitely don't get too hung up on the map. If you're not sure where to send people, send them to us and we'll send them to somebody. Um, and then we also have uh, growchaos.com too, just if you need kind of another place to go get information on Grow Kansas. I'm a Jean. Dev, I have a question directly to me. Would equipment for a new business be part of the loan opportunity? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Good. Yeah, I was and talking to a, a partner this week and uh, there's a big expansion of a business and they're buying a uh, like a bulldozer or something that costs eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, you know, and that's those are the perfect types of deals we like. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So now we'll uh, switch gears a little bit and I will let Trish uh, take over and walk us through the, the equity side of Grow Kansas. Well, thank you, Ima Jean, and thanks, Nancy, again, for inviting us this morning to talk about our new program. Again, I'm Trish Braystead, and I'm the president of a new business unit at Network Kansas called Entrepreneurial Growth Ventures. And myself and my growing team um, are the group that supports um, high-growth innovation entrepreneurs across the state. And uh, many of you uh, may be familiar with, and as Ima Jean explained, our um, uh, equity program for SSBCI 1.0, and um, it was the multiplier venture, you know, that was a very successful program for us. And so we knew that when it was time that the SSBCI 2.0 came around, that we wanted to launch another similar program, but with a couple of very important enhancements. And um, 
that's what led us to now what we've launched on August 1st, the Angel Capital Support Program. It's about an $18 million program. So equity, uh, let's back up a little bit. Equity investments are when entrepreneurs are selling ownership in their business. And a lot of these come about because they're starting from scratch. They're developing an idea, um, developing a product, um, and taking it through commercialization. So they've, they've got various stages they need to get through from start to profitability. And a lot of times they'll raise multiple rounds of financing um, on the equity side when they're selling, um, selling that equity. So we, in this program, can uh, write a check up to, our maximum is $250,000, we have a minimum investment of about $50,000. And so it really depends on, on the project. And the intent again of all of these dollars uh, through SSBCI are to leverage private dollars. So they all do require um, private match as leverage. Um, one of the enhancements that we did and, and differences between this program and our first program is that we only participated by design the first time around in the first funding round. And that was because we wanted to make sure that we had a good diverse portfolio across the state and had enough money to, to get as many people access to the program as possible. And because we have an enhanced program, we now have the ability to invest in a second round of financing up to $150,000. So that, that gives um, these entrepreneurs that need to raise multiple rounds the opp opportunity to um, access this program more than once. And then our second enhancement, which I think is probably one of the most important enhancements, is really our ability to decrease the match. If you are a minority or a female, a, a female founder, then we have decreased the match requirement from a one-to-one, -one, which is the, the, the um, minimum match has to be a one-to-one. -one. We've change that to a one to two. So what that means is an entrepreneur who may need $300,000 to fund their opportunity, if they are not um, female or minority, the maximum they could get would be 150. So they would provide private equity um, support from other individuals or funds of 150 and we could provide up to 150. If you're female or minority, they would need to raise 100,000 and we could participate to the tune of 200,000. So um, the intent of this program is to reach, as Imogene indicated before, those that are in the SETI category, but it's also, um, you know, uh, an intention of Network Kansas to make sure that we're reaching um, and impacting those um, uh, populations that, that have been underserved previously. So we're, we're ecstatic about those two enhancements to this program. Um, if we go to the next slide, let's talk a little bit more about eligibility and the deal profile. Um, so it's for for-profit businesses, which is a little different than the loans. I think the loan program this go around, you can be a nonprofit. On the equity side, because we're selling equity, you know, nonprofits don't have any equity to sell. Um, you do have to be a for-profit business and Kansas-based. So it's broad. We're looking across the state, anybody who's got a for-profit business and they're trying to find a way to fund their new opportunities or their new ideas and they're for-profit and Kansas-based, we want to take a look at them. Private capital is required. One of the things that um, my group does and enhances the opportunity for those is that we belong to a syndication group um, in the region of other angel capital providers. So that may be um, a constraint or a challenge for some of these entrepreneurs is where do they find that private capital? And so we have some mechanisms. We won't raise the money for them, but we do have some ability to make introductions and to help them find those others that may be uh, willing and interested to come in and participate in their rounds. Like the loan program, we can't participate in rounds that are more than 20 million. Um, 20 million is a pretty, pretty large, pretty large number. We don't typically run into too many problems with that ceiling. So most rounds will qualify that, that we see. We do also have a 90 day look back. Um, what we're trying to do is make sure that we're intentional about um, providing access and cause and result for the funding that we're providing. So um, we try to find folks who are in the, the very beginning phases of their fundraise, but occasionally 
um, we'll find someone who's already started that fundraise and, and we do have the ability to look back 90 days to give them credit for the match. We are industry agnostic. So um, I'll talk a little bit about what the deals that we've done thus far, um, but it's pretty broad, it's diverse. We've got all kinds of opportunities that we'll fund. So it's not a specific industry sector. So we wanna see anything, um, anything that entrepreneurs um, are working on, we wanna see. Most of what we're doing um, and most of what we did in the first program was pre-seed, seed and early stage businesses. I would probably change that definition a little bit. And what we're hoping to see in this new program might be, it would still be considered early stage, but it might be a new product development in a company that's um, trying to rethink their product strategy. And so we may see an existing business that um, their, their business base has matured and maybe they've got some new ideas and some new things and new products or ideas that they want to develop. And so we're hoping that um, now that this program has been extend, extended, that we'll see a little bit more of that. So really, if you're scaling um, and you're selling outside of Kansas, um, that's a question I get a lot. You know, what, what does a typical entrepreneur look like on the equity side? If they're looking to scale their business and they're selling a product outside the state, they would probably be a candidate for at least looking and seeing what the equity side might provide to them. We do work with a lot of uh, sole proprietors in the beginning when they first get started. And what they find is that their business is growing to a point where they can't satisfy that growth. And the capital intensive nature of what they're trying to do, they may not have uh, applicable collateral so they can't get a bank loan. So those would be the types of deals also that we would wanna look at on the angel uh, capital program. So now that we know who's eligible and what it's all about, let's talk about the process. This is very different than the way the loan program is managed. Um, the equity program is managed 100% internally by Network Kansas. We do partner with a couple of folks to help streamline the intake process and, and part of the process, but all of those uh, prospects will come from our service providers across the state um, or entrepreneurs directly into uh, the EGV unit at Network Kansas. And once we do an initial screening with those folks, we send out directly the application and the due diligence request, and we start working hand hand to hand with them at that point. You know, we're very hands-on uh, with this program because we are going to become owners with those entrepreneurs. So, um, you know, we work hand in hand with those entrepreneurs from the time that we start talking to them to the time that we then exit that successful business. We do uh, have, it takes us about right now, about 30 days from start to finish. Uh, once they officially get into our process with their application and their original due diligence. And we have um, a very knowledgeable and experienced uh, review committee that are, uh, it has people on it that are statewide that review deals um, on a monthly basis. So we meet the first Wednesday of every month to go over deals and make sure that the process is um, uh, efficient and that we're getting capital out the door to these entrepreneurs. Most of the entrepreneurs we see, you know, clearly need capital quickly. So um, I think we've designed a process that is not only efficient, but um, is built for our success as well as theirs. And so to date, um, we've approved eight deals. So we're one, about $1.8 million in. Again, I said we are industry agnostic. So the deals we've done so far, animal health, industrial tech, gov tech, we've got some uh, human resource um, tech, education, we've got some consumer products and ag tech. So um, it's, it's a diverse group uh, from an industry perspective. And we're proud that of the eight deals we've done, five of them have had female, female founders. So, um, you know, love the fact that we've got um, a good group of uh, women leading the charge in, in starting some of these um, new and innovative companies in Kansas. And we have some of the same restrictions um, that Ima Dean talked about with regards to sort of what the, the parameters are around the around the program, you know, we can't invest in anybody who's got more than 500 employees. We're probably not gonna ever see that on the equity side. 
And we really have intentionality and Treasury has put some intentionality around what they call very small businesses. And so seven of those eight are defined as very small business. So they have less than 10 employees. And so we're, we're proud of that because our goal is to, is to help them and get engaged with them when they're small, provide capital so that they can grow jobs um, and you know run successful businesses. So um, with that, um, prospects, Impact Center. Uh, we get most of our prospects, you can call the Impact Center line or equity at networkkansas.com. That's where a lot of our um, inquiries come from. I will say this, um, the more people that know about this program, the better. So I encourage all of you or any of you, if you have specific questions, I'll answer questions now, but feel free if you've got projects that could even possibly be um, a prospect for our program, give us a call, send us an email. We're happy to, to talk through it and to figure out, you know, what might work best. And Imogene, my team and her team work really closely together. So we're constantly um, sharing opportunities um, that come through the door to make sure that we're providing the right type of capital access for, for the entrepreneurs. So I will say the diversification on geography on my program at this point with our eight deals isn't isn't as good as I'm a gene. So I've got um, I've got my work cut out for me because I want to get from Hayes to Kansas City. So um, that's why I really like being able to talk to, to this group because you guys are out on the front lines with um, the entrepreneurs in these rural communities and we want to talk to them about what they're trying to do and figure out whether or not the equity program is right for them. So happy to take any questions. Uh, GrowKansas.com has information on both the loan and the equity program. So if you want to go to that, that website as well, happy to answer any questions. Yeah, I, I would like to emphasize one thing that we, we, we don't, we didn't share because it's just too much detail, but, uh, these, the, the programs this time around in 2.0 versus last time, the match is significantly higher in all of the programs. Um, and so we intentionally have done that, you know, with, I mean, that's why we did it with the loan program, five different programs with, you know, a heavy match for rural and urban distressed, heavy match for women and minority led businesses. Um, the only pro actually every single program in this is better from a matching standpoint than it was in 1.0. And the same goes on the equity side. Um, one, one to one was just something we weren't doing. In fact, I got an email from, we presented to all the states last week and I got an email from Michigan asking how we're doing that and how we're meeting the treasury guidelines for it. And so um, uh, these programs, the way they're set up now are really, can really be helpful for businesses especially in this rising rate environment. Yeah, you're right, Steve, because in, in, in our venture program, the first go round, we were only matching, you know, we were only putting in 10% of any projects. So it's significantly increased. And, and we've done that because we know that um, it, providing them all of the other resources that come about, we know that we'll still be able to hit our 10 to one leverage, which over the life of the program is the goal. So Treasury's got some pretty lofty goals for us, but this is a nine-year program. And so we've got time to um, to make sure that we're going to hit that 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 10 to 1 leverage. This is and that's the good news is there's plenty of money. So um, it's not as if you know it's going to run out in the next year. So um, yeah, the more we talk about it and the more we share this information with, with folks, the more we can get the, you know, get them in the process and start thinking about new and fun things they might want to start. So if you weren't at the call on the call at the beginning, um, you may not have heard me say that at the end I've, I've uh, um, done a survey and I hope you won't skip over it because you think it's hard because what we want you to do is get the right answer. Okay. And so I wrote a not very good question asking what types of entrepreneurs um, these programs will, between the two of them, the answer is all of them and more.
So you've just gotten the hardest answer on that questionnaire. Um, the answer is all of them. And if you don't see it on the list, probably that one too. Um, and call Imogene or um, go on the Grow Kansas website and ask your question. Let them tell you it doesn't qualify and why, because you probably know somebody else who would qualify and we want you to tell them about this. Um, our goal is to use all that money. I mean, when when have you heard somebody say we've got more money than we know what to do with, um, including a small business owner? Um, so that's that's the moral of the story. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, I see St Stephen Trish saying yes, and that's that's as good, good enough for me. Well, and the other piece to this, and this is like a, I mean, this program will ensure that Kansas entrepreneurs have gap financing and in, in perpetuity, if we do it right, you know, and from our previous experience in 1.0, um, it, it, <clears throat> we demonstrated that. And so, I mean, this money just gets poured right back in and do it again. And so even when the program ends, all that all those funds will be, just be replenished and be able to loan that, loaned out again. And and uh, with equity and ex exits, we should be able to do the same with the equity program. The future is so bright, I can hardly see. Okay, um, if there's no more questions, and even if there are more questions, you know who to call now, you know where to get the answers. But I want to turn over, we usually have partner sharing, and this time we've primed the pump for who's going to partner share. Maggie Bellinger is here from the, the Technical Assistance to Brownfields program, and we thought it was a good um, um, segue to, to share a little bit about that program. Maggie, you want to share your information? Yeah, great. Good morning, everyone, um, and thank you for the opportunity to um, tag on to the end of your um, Friday today. Um, so my name is Maggie Ballinger and I'm with the Kansas State University Technical Assistance to Brownfields program. Oh, why can't I not? Okay. There we go. Um, and so I just wanted to quickly um, share with you um, who we are and kind of what we do. So as you guys are out there um, working with communities or communities and um, we're just another free resource um, to help communities with essentially economic redevelopment. Our main focus is on brownfields um, sites, projects, uh, but brownfields can be a very uh, broad term, really. Um, so pretty much any property that's been neglected for some reason and there's a potential for environmental contamination that could be hindering redevelopment or moving a site forward is what we consider a brownfield. And so um, we can help uh, communities with that. We are funded through the EPA, so all of the services that we're able to provide to communities is free at no cost to them. Um, as you can see on this map um, at K Kansas State, we support communities um, in the EPA regions 5, 6, 7, and 8. So we have 21 states that we provide services in, um, including communities in Kansas. Um, and to help us do that, we have over uh, 30 partners of various experts um, and experience in anything from Brownsfield redevelopment, economic um, analysis. We can do, you know, market analysis for highest and best use. Um, we can do a lot of just helping communities identify or governments identify sites, uh, do strategic planning for uh, a downtown or corridor or particular area planning. We do a lot of community outreach and input, just talking about, you know, again, kind of what are brownfields? How can we tap into resources um, to get these properties back into productive use? And we can help connect and identify funding sources. So um, I really enjoyed listening to um, Network Kansas. You guys share on some of your funding because I will share that with my colleague, Jen Clancy, who supports communities um, in Kansas. I think that could be really beneficial. Um, we really don't have a limit to the services we provide. Um, as long as, again, there's a Brownfields tie, we can come into a community, help them out and support them. Uh, we also have a website that has a lot of good resources, um, a lot of fact sheets that talk about 
uh, again, brownfields, talk about maybe environmental contamination. What does it mean? Um, how can we navigate? Um, if people are looking to hire a contractor for some, um, whether, whether it's environmental related or not, um, we have some resources available for that. Um, we do a lot of um, going into communities and doing community outreach to help facilitate conversations, um, get people on the same page, do a lot of um, reuse visioning if people have a particular site, property, or sometimes they're looking at multiple sites within you know, a corridor or a particular area and they don't know where to get started or you know, the community members or sometimes even local leaders can't get on the same page. Um, we can come in as kind of a neutral party and just help facilitate those discussions, do some fun exercises um, and just really get them started on narrowing down what they want and setting priorities for reuse. Um, we also put on educational workshops, webinars. We're getting ready to gear up to do some um, on-demand series, snort, short little snippets um, so people can log on you know, anytime um, and listen to topics that they're interested in. Uh, we also have an online tool called the Brownfields Inventory Tool. Uh, for It's free to use for anybody. It's uh, password protected. And um, it's just a way for people to keep track of their sites um, and inventory their sites as they go through the process. Um, and uh, we don't have a formal process for requesting our services. It's very informal. Uh, people can uh, contact us um, on our webpage. We have a contacts tab. And so depending on where you're at, which in Kansas, most people, they'd be reaching out to Jennifer Clancy um, or myself. Uh, they can send an email or give us a phone call. We talk a little bit about their project and their needs, um, make sure it's a good fit for us and our services. And then we outline a scope of work and um, get started. So uh, we are gearing up to um, apply for a lot of money um, through the infrastructure law funding through EPA. Um, our, our applications are due February 14th and we will be applying for um, $23 million um, to support, to continue to support the 21 states as well as national. So um, we are gearing up for that. Um, we brought on some additional partners to do that. Um, so if communities are looking at like green infrastructure or even, you know, converting landfills or closed landfills, um, to bright fields, that's kind of popular, or solar fields. Um, we've got partners um, for that. And um, we're doing thinking of some other creative ways to um, use our funds if we get funded. So uh, if you guys have any ideas or, um, you're, again, you're out there working and partnering with communities and you think um, TAP could help in some way, um, just reach out. Yeah, and, and Maggie, um, Network Kansas does some partner, Sarah LaRoche um, does some partner meetings that I think would be terrific if you would attend and, and explain this again. I, yeah. I think in my exposure to the technical assistance, the Browns fields, I've been exposed a couple of times and sometimes it's just hard for me to take in all the things mm -hmm. that you will do for people. And um, so again, let let Maggie tell you no. You know, don't tell yourself no before you ask the technical assistance, the Brownfields people. Let them tell you no. That doesn't qualify here, but where else could you go? Um, don't be the person that says no to yourself. <laughs> That's a really good point. Thank you. Uh -huh. You're welcome. And uh, you know, I am compelled by the fact that. Um, the way that the future will change is the, the ways that we connect to each other. All right, is there any other partner sharing that I didn't give you the opportunity to make? I think a lot of you are aware that we do grant workshops and um, for this next year, we have there, many of them are online. Um, we are doing, um, I put the enrollment information there. We do five of them a year uh, that are virtual. They're named for the community that's hosting them. One of our hosts is on the on the phone here. Chuck Laughlin is hosting a June workshop um, for uh, especially for teachers 
Um, and those workshops have resulted in $38 million of successful um, grants being written. Um, and in the first year, I should say in the first year that they, um, after they attended. Um, and so the other thing that you might, uh, for some of your communities, the League of Community, the League of Kansas Municipalities is I'm going to do this workshop in person for them. Uh, and Deborah, take note. I asked them specifically to host one in Southwest Kansas in God's country. Uh, we will be in July, we will be there in God's country um, teaching grant workshops in person. They're quite a bit more expensive, but they're hosted by the League of Kansas Municipalities, and I'll have um, an expert there who has written um, community development block grants and other city grants. So, uh, and then you always learn from your colleagues. So these will be city clerks and others who are going for those great big grants, not just uh, local community foundation grants, that type of thing. So um, keep your eyes out for that. If you want specific information, make sure that I have you on my grant writing um, email list. Just send me an, an email um, and I'll put my email address in there. Um, so we are over time this, so I'm gonna wrap this up pretty quickly. Um, next month, um, call will be what can Kansas tourism do for your town's economic development with Bridget Job, the Kansas tourism director. And I've uh, got one little thought for the day to leave you with. Jonas Salk said, I have had dreams and I've had nightmares, but I have conquered my nightmares because of my dreams. So great, go out there and create a great Kansas day. Thanks for attending. <laughs>